The moon was a silver sickle in the night sky as Dr. Eleanor Wentworth stepped off the final coach that had brought her to the desolate village of Ravensbrook. As she paid her fare and tipped the coachman, she couldn't shake off the feeling that she had entered a land forgotten by God and man alike. The village seemed stuck in time, its cobbled streets and ramshackle buildings suffused with an air of weary resignation. Careful, doctor. It's a godforsaken place, said the coachman, his eyes betraying a mixture of pity and relief as he prepared to depart. Thank you for the warning, Eleanor replied. But it's exactly places like these where my work is most needed. No sooner had the coach retreated into the darkness than Eleanor found herself accosted by a grim figure. Standing about six feet tall, the man was cloaked in a tattered overcoat and had an unkempt beard. You're the investigator? He rasped. I am Dr. Eleanor Wentworth, yes. Robert McLeod, he grunted. I've got rooms set up for you. This way. Eleanor followed him her medical bag and small suitcase rolling along the uneven path. She already knew of the McClouds. They were one of the two prominent families in Ravensbrook. The other being the Daltons. Both had reputations that were complicated. They arrived at a modest inn. Robert opened the door, revealing a cozy if somewhat dated interior. It's humble, but you'll be safe here, he said. I've slept in worse places, Eleanor assured him. She thought she detected a hint of a smile in Robert's eyes. You might want to reconsider that statement, Doctor. In Ravensbrook, safety is a luxury. Morning arrived like a sigh, pale sunlight filtering through Eleanor's window. A brief exploration of the inn revealed that she was its only guest. Robert McLeod had vanished, presumably back to his own domain, but had left a note directing her to the house of the village constable, Mr. Lawrence. It was a somber affair, that first meeting. Lawrence, a portly man with eyes that had long ago stopped seeing anything but the worst in life, handed Eleanor a file. These are the victims, Doctor, he said. Four in the last month. Eleanor leafed through the documents. It was grim reading. All had suffered violent deaths. But it was the manner of their passing that caused her concern. Two had been drained of blood, and two had been brutally torn apart. A vampire and a werewolf, she mused aloud. Lawrence snorted. Nonsense! We're looking for a madman, Doctor, not myths and legends. Eleanor fixed her eyes on him. I have seen things in my career that defy explanation, Mr. Lawrence. Trust me when I say we should not rule out any possibilities. Their conversation was cut short by a panicked knocking at the door. It was a young man, out of breath and clearly distressed. Sir, another one! Old Mrs. Thompson! Eleanor felt a cold shiver run down her spine. Take us there now! The crime scene was a chaos of blood and terror. Mrs. Thompson lay in her bed, her lifeless eyes staring at the ceiling. Her body had been mutilated, almost torn to shreds. Eleanor felt a rising wave of nausea, but fought it back. She needed to be clinical, detached. But as she examined the body, she saw something that made her blood run cold. Claw marks, unmistakable and damning, adorned the victim's flesh. Looks like an animal attack, said Lawrence, disbelief painting his features. Or a werewolf, Eleanor replied softly. The constable looked at her as if she'd lost her mind. But Eleanor was resolute. This was no ordinary crime and Ravensbrook was no ordinary village. As she left the house, a feeling of being watched settled over her. Looking up, she locked eyes with a figure standing in the shadows of a nearby building. A member of the Dalton family, no doubt. It was becoming abundantly clear to Eleanor that she was now a player in a deadly game. A game whose rules she didn't yet understand, but was desperate to learn. Eleanor spent the afternoon poring over her notes and the scant documentation provided by Constable Lawrence. The tension in Ravensbrook was palpable. The village had lost another of its own, and faith in authority was eroding fast. Her thoughts were interrupted by a soft knock on her door. Come in, she called, and the door swung open to reveal a man of remarkable beauty. 
He was dressed in a finely tailored suit and his eyes held a predatory gleam. Dr. Wentworth, a pleasure to finally meet you, he said, extending a gloved hand. My name is Victor Dalton. Mr. Dalton, Eleanor greeted, not taking the offered hand. To what do I owe this visit? Victor chuckled. Straight to business, I see. Very well. We have a mutual problem, Doctor. The unfortunate demise of the villagers. We may have a mutual problem, Mr. Dalton. But whether our interests align is another matter. Ah, skepticism. A wise stance to take in Ravensbrook. Allow me to be transparent. The deaths are affecting our business ventures. They are also stoking unnecessary tension between my family and the McLeods. We would like this sorted immediately. And what do you propose? Eleanor asked cautiously. A partnership of sorts. My family has resources, influence, and more importantly, information that could assist your investigation. Eleanor pondered. Aligning with the Daltons could grant her access to critical details, but at what cost? Trust was a rare commodity in Ravensbrook, and she doubted Victor offered his aid altruistically. Give me one good reason why I should trust you, Eleanor finally said. Victor leaned in closer. Because, Dr. Wentworth, it is not in our interest for the murders to continue. And believe me, you will need all the help you can get. His words hung heavy in the room as he retreated, leaving Eleanor to contemplate her next move. The Daltons had extended their hand, but did they hold a dagger in the other? As night fell, Eleanor couldn't help but consider Victor Dalton's proposition. His offer was a gamble, a potential Faustian pact, but the clock was ticking. Before she could ruminate further, a noise broke the silence, a distant howl echoing through the darkened streets of Ravensbrook. It was a full moon tonight. Armed with a pistol and a satchel of medical supplies, Eleanor stepped out into the night. The air was thick with tension, as if the village itself held its breath in anticipation. Tonight, she would not wait for another victim to be claimed. She would seek out the truth herself. Through narrow alleyways and dim-lit streets, Eleanor made her way towards the forest that flanked Ravensbrook. The howls grew more frequent, now accompanied by another sound, faint but unmistakable, the haunting wail of a woman in distress. Eleanor's footsteps quickened, her heart pounding in her chest. Finally, she broke through the tree line and arrived at a clearing, only to witness a scene of horror. A figure loomed over a woman lying on the ground, a beastly silhouette backlit by the full moon. Eleanor's fingers tightened around her pistol before she could pull the trigger, another figure pounced from the shadows, colliding with the first in a shower of fangs and fur. A werewolf and a vampire, battling to the death. Eleanor seized the opportunity to rush to the woman's aid. Checking her pulse, she found her alive but in a state of shock. Dragging her to the edge of the clearing, Eleanor looked back just in time to see the werewolf land, a deadly blow, tearing the vampire's head clean off. The beast turned its gaze towards her, its eyes glinting with a savage intelligence. Suddenly, a gunshot pierced the air, and the werewolf staggered back, clutching its side. Emerging from the forest was Robert McLeod, shotgun in hand. The werewolf let out a mournful howl before retreating into the darkness. Robert approached, his eyes meeting Eleanor's. Looks like you've seen the truth, Doctor. The truth. Eleanor mused, or just another layer of deception. Either way, the lines had been drawn, and Eleanor knew she was now irrevocably involved in this deadly tapestry of hatred and horror that was Ravensbrook. After the night in the forest, Eleanor was a changed woman. The academic curiosity that had once fueled her had now turned into a burning urgency. With a living, breathing witness saved from last night's attack, Eleanor finally had the leverage she needed to make informed decisions. As if on cue, a discreet package arrived at her door. Inside were letters, maps, and ledgers. All confidential information that could only have come from the Daltons. Among the papers was a handwritten note from Victor. Dr. Wentworth, consider this a show of good faith. V.D. 
Eleanor spent hours poring over the documents. There were coded references to deliveries and trading posts, but most revealing were the letters exchanged between members of the Dalton family. The vampires had a contentious but controlled relationship with the werewolves, a pact born from necessity to keep the villagers from discovering their true nature. But now, someone, or something, was upsetting that balance. Doctor! A word? Eleanor looked up to see Robert McLeod standing in the doorway. His eyes fell on the papers strewn about. I see you've been busy, he remarked. As have you, Eleanor replied, recalling the gunshot that had saved her life and likely that of the young woman. Robert, why did you intervene last night? Robert sighed. You've seen enough to know that we're not dealing with mere folklore. The McLeods and Daltons have a truce of sorts. This rogue werewolf isn't one of mine, and it threatens to expose us all. And do you know who this rogue is? Eleanor asked. If I did, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Eleanor knew she had arrived at a crucial juncture. She could partner with the Daltons and get access to an underground world of secrets. Or she could align with the McLeods and gain the protection of those who roamed the night. Robert, Eleanor finally said, I believe an alliance between the McLeods and myself could end this cycle of death. I offer you my trust. Robert extended his hand. Then let's put an end to this madness. As their hands met, Eleanor couldn't shake off the feeling that she had just made a deal with the devil. But in Ravensbrook, perhaps the devil was the lesser of two evils. Armed with new resolve and unsettling alliances, Eleanor decided it was time to act. The woman from the forest had regained consciousness and confirmed Eleanor's worst fears. There was indeed a rogue werewolf, and it had been stalking her for days before the attack. Yet she could offer no clue as to its identity. Eleanor shared her findings with Robert. It's premeditated, Robert. This isn't some animal acting on instinct. It's someone with a plan. Robert's expression darkened, which makes them all the more dangerous. The full moon is waning. We have to act tonight. Evening fell like a guillotine, severing the day from a night that promised only darkness and dread. Eleanor and Robert took up their positions at separate points in the forest, both near locations identified as high risk from their analyses. Hours ticked by, each one an eternity. Just as Eleanor began to question the plan, a howl shattered the silence. It was close. Too close. The hairs on the back of her neck stood up as she sensed a presence behind her. Whirling around, she came face to face with the rogue werewolf, its eyes ablaze with malevolent intelligence. Before she could pull the trigger, it lunged at her, knocking the pistol out of her hand. Just as its jaws descended towards her throat, a shot rang out. The werewolf yelped and staggered back. Robert emerged from the trees, shotgun smoking. I've been tracking you all night, he snarled at the werewolf. It growled back, its eyes darting between the two humans. Then, with astonishing speed, it morphed into a human form. Eleanor gasped. It was Victor Dalton. So this is how you repay my family's generosity, Dr. Wentworth? By allying yourself with these beasts, Victor spat. You've been murdering innocent people, Eleanor shot back. Innocent? No one in this wretched village is innocent. They would hang us all if they knew the truth, Victor snarled. A growl from Robert cut the conversation short. Enough talk. This ends now. Victor shifted back into his werewolf form and lunged at Robert. The two collided in a whirlwind of fangs and fur a dance of death under the waning moon. Eleanor retrieved her pistol and took aim, but the combatants were too entangled to risk a shot. Finally, with a savage thrust, Robert's claws found their mark, piercing Victor's heart. The rogue werewolf let out a final anguished howl before collapsing to the ground, dead. Victor's body lay lifeless on the forest floor, his transformation reversing to reveal his human form in death. Eleanor stared down at him, a mix of relief and horror settling within her. Robert wiped the blood from his claws, his own transformation receding. It's over, 
he said, eyes meeting Eleanor's. Is it? Eleanor countered. Victor Dalton, a vampire, was also a werewolf? How is that even possible? Robert sighed. Victor was a hybrid, something both families considered an abomination. Only a few knew about his true nature. So he was tearing the village apart because... Because he felt like an outcast, rejected by both sides. His acts were a manifestation of his resentment, Robert explained. Eleanor's eyes fell on the package Victor had sent her earlier. Among the papers was an ancient-looking map marking a location deep within the forest. If Victor was willing to kill to disrupt this tenuous peace, what else was he hiding? Robert looked at her seriously. Truth is a double-edged sword, Eleanor. Are you prepared for the repercussions? She considered his words, then tucked the map into her satchel. I'm a scientist, Robert. My allegiance is to the truth, no matter how uncomfortable. As they left the forest, Eleanor pondered the cost of uncovering truth in a world so keen on hiding it. Ravensbrook would have to face its unsettling reality, just as she and Robert would have to face whatever came next. The dark tapestry of the village had unraveled, and there was no going back. Thank you for letting me guide you through today's chilling tale. If your heart's still pounding and you crave more, don't hesitate to like this video and subscribe for more unsettling stories straight from the darker corners of the human mind. On your screen now is another tale or playlist that promises to keep the suspense alive. Until we meet again, be careful. The darkness has eyes and it watches.